Welcome everyone, I'm Darkhour717 and today we're going to be taking a look at the current state of the Ninetales dynamic event. Before we get started, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button though and follow over on Twitch where you can catch the stream every Wednesday and Sunday night at 7 p.m. Eastern Time. Also stick around to the end of the video to see how you can win the IAE Nomad Starter Pack that includes Squadron 42. With the release of Patch 3.16 into PTU, we discovered that they were going to also be running the Ninetales event over the winter break alongside Jump Town 2. In its first run, Ninetales proved to have several issues as well as a low participation rate, and really struggled to gain the popularity that the Xenothreat dynamic event had earned. In its post-mortem, several issues were brought out as far as ability to play either side of the event as well as availability and knowledge when the event would even be launching. In the second running of this event, it appears that some of the concerns have been addressed by CIG. But does this increase its popularity or participation rate? The event itself is a blockade of a random Lagrange station. It kicks off through several messages that are sent out by the CDF, much like Xenothreat did. After several announcements and warnings that hostiles may be increasing to take action, they announce a blockade of a specific location. This announcement from the first one to the final launch of the event typically will be done over a time period of up to two hours. At this point, the quantum blockade is up and in place and around the station that is being locked down. This forces a player to fly under hydrogen power instead of being able to quantum in close to the station. This does help take care of the issue of knowing when the event is going to launch. That was a definite concern after the first run. On top of that, CIG has published a schedule to Spectrum for the winter break of when the mission will be running, and therefore making it easier for people to know when to get into the verse and be able to participate in the event. After the blockade is announced, there's a few different missions that become available to everyone. We have the medical supply transportation, the CDF combat support, and of course pirate combat support. Let's take a look at the medical supply transportation. This is a mission that is the most profitable aspect of Ninetales. It requires a player on the legal side to run medical supplies from one of six locations to the blockaded station. The six locations you can obtain these from are Rayari Anvik on Calliope, Rayari McGrath on Cleo, Hicks Research on Selen, Deacon's Research on Yella, Orison at TDD or Municipal Services, and of course Port Olisar, though during this run it seems like Port Olisar is kind of bugged out and doesn't really provide medical supplies as it should. Along with these six locations, you can also locate medical supplies on derelict ships, though in practice this makes the supply runs far less profitable due to the time that it takes. In the first run of Nine Tails, it was found that medical supply missions was not favorable due to the low supply amounts and usually required pre-purchasing and pre-stocking supplies before the event would even start. This time around though, CIG has taken the steps of removing and adjusting the caps on buying and selling to allow this portion of Ninetales to be more fluid and maintain a flow that makes it more pleasing to do. It also removes the need to pre-purchase or pre-stock before the event launch. Though we do find that when getting ready to do Ninetales, those that are going to be transporting supplies are best to land and stand by at one of the stations before it starts so that once the priority delivery mission becomes available, they can load up and make their way to the blockaded station. This is really going to be the best time to be able to fill up a ship as large as the C2 all in one go. As the event does progress, the buying and selling of medical supplies do eventually hit saturation and waiting for a server cycle does become necessary. Though not to the point that it makes it unplayable. With a full C2 though, a player can profit upwards of almost 700,000 AUEC in one shot. Bringing these supplies throughout the entire event is very possible. Though at times, the ability to defend the scanning ships as part of the combat missions does dictate that some people will have to come off the medical supply transportation to help provide support to the fighters. Which brings us to the CDF combat support. At the same time that medical supply delivery missions are running, you will also have the option to select the priority mission to defend the area and break the blockade through protecting the scanning ships and defeating Ninetales aggressors in the area. This mission is also found in your Moby Glass and can be selected at launch of the event or any time during its run. It is also possible to switch back and forth between delivery and defend missions as you would like to throughout the course of the event. In the combat defend mission, it is best to set your medical point on the station that is being blockaded. This way, if you do get shot down, you can easily respawn locally and get back into the fight. 
The basis of this is to go out and fight PvE and PvP to take down the aggressors and protect the groups of scanning ships that are looking for the source of the blockade. This will go through several waves as you proceed through each scanning area and audio prompts will keep you informed of when it's time to move as well as markers for each new location. It's very important to remember that when you're fighting the Ninetales, if that marker moves to a new scanning location, your best to stop your fighting and proceed to the new location to protect the ship. The overall goal is to keep the aggressors from destroying the scanning ship as they proceed though. A good rule of thumb with this is to also make sure you accept the call to arms mission in the mercenary tab of your general missions of the Moby Glass for additional AUEC with each takedown. This portion is profitable as well, though not as highly profitable as the delivery mission. And on the other side of things, we have our pirate combat support. This is actually going to be available if you have a crime stat at the launch of the event. and basically consists of being hired to take down the delivery ships as well as the scanning ships. Though the scanning ships are the higher priority, after the first run of Ninetales, as mentioned, the ability to play the pirate side was a large concern by those that enjoy this aspect of the game. And though I don't usually participate in this side of the event, it is nice to see that CIG took the concern seriously and has implemented the solution to bring those who enjoy this into the event in a legitimate way that allows them to profit from the event as well. In the few playthroughs of the event, we did find that there were participants that played this side of the event, though not in great numbers. The AUEC payout for this is typically lower, but can still be somewhat profitable. It is a new addition and a great way to introduce PvP into the event itself, as their overall goal is to ultimately destroy the scanning ships to keep you from finding out the source. The event itself is a highly profitable way to make AUEC, especially if you're doing those delivery missions. Overall, it does provide for a fun and lengthy time period of which you can be engaged in a single activity. The course of the event is indicated as you proceed through by two progress bars at the top of your HUD. One bar indicates the progression of the event itself and a second that shows progression of the scanning ship's current scan. All of this comes to a close with one last major battle that Seas and Idris brought in as well as numerous hammerheads that creates a final all-out battle of humongous scale. And any time an Idris can be brought into a fight, it is always a great time. And upon destruction of the Idris, the event comes to a close or failure to protect the scanning ships or defeat the Idris will result in a loss as well. The Ninetales event, when originally introduced, really turned out to be a lengthy gameplay loop. As mentioned, it really struggled to gain as much popularity as the Xenothread event. In this second running of the event, several improvements have been made. There have been adjustments with 316 in the law enforcement system, improving the issue of unintended friendly fire incidents, resulting in unwanted crime stats, Supply availability has been addressed and is honestly fairly balanced in this run, and the introduction of the pirate mission brings the event to all citizens. Timing has also been improved as mentioned with more clear schedule of when it will run as well as lengthy time with pre-launch announcements prior to its starting. Where the event itself still tends to suffer is the length. In all instances that we ran the event, it was no less than three hours or more start to finish from the actual launch. This does not include the time to make the pre-launch announcement, which in comparison to Xenothreat does also run a lengthy amount of time. And the gameplay scenario is very similar in the fact that you have a delivery aspect, PvE or PvP aspect, and a final interest battle. The Ninetales event comes off for some reason as more monotonous though. At times it seems very repetitive and gives more of a feeling of overextended and drawn out gameplay. One thing I will say Xenothreat has over Ninetales is the need to escort delivery ships. In Xenothreat, when ships are hauling quantum sensitive supplies, the need is often to escort them back to Jericho as an ambush is most guaranteed by NPCs en route. Where the delivery missions in Ninetales, really every time we played this was unencumbered. It was easy to fly in and out, there was no confrontation when you're delivering the medical supplies and little to no opposition to deliver to the station. Xenothreat also delivers a much better FPS experience in that you have no option but to go on the derelict Starfarer to get your supplies and clear the area of hostile. In Ninetales, there's no requirement or need to find or even board the supply ship and delivery of needed goods can continue from outside locations. This in turn removes any and all FPS requirement for the event. The improvements made in this event have definitely been much needed and are a great start in overall enjoyment of Ninetales, 
Though still not as popular or the excitement level of Xenothreat, it still holds great potential. With the improved AUEC earning ability and improvements in the law enforcement crime stat system and fixes in the supply chain, the event has come a long way from its first run. Time length does still seem a bit unbalanced in regard to staving off the repetitiveness. Though the future runs of this, I really do hope we'll see some further improvement. I will admit though, this is a huge AUEC earner in that typically you can make upwards of 2 million AUEC if you combine the combat and the delivery side of the legal missions and really maximize that earning potential. I hope this review of Ninetales event has been useful and please let me know what your thoughts on the event are and what experience you have had in the comments below. I do see this as an event we will continue to participate in as time allows though. Don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button and follow on Twitch to catch a stream every Sunday and Wednesday night at 7 p.m. Eastern Time, as well as catch our State of the Verse podcast every Saturday night at 8.30 p.m. Eastern Time. And make sure to get all your entries in for January's giveaway of an IAE 2951 Nomad Starter Pack. That's also going to include Squadron 42. Just follow on Twitch or subscribe here on YouTube and leave a comment on any video, and you'll automatically be entered. And if you do both, you'll double your chance. My thanks to Helio from Amarox Fang Org for donating the starter pack for this month's giveaway. And if you'd also like to support the channel, check out the membership by hitting the join button and becoming a member for as little as 99 cents a month. Or check out the Patreon or merch store. All of your support is greatly appreciated and I'd like to personally thank all of you for supporting us. That's going to be it for now though and we will catch you next time. <laughs>